Uh, as we have discussed in the previous lectures uh, about the vector space and when we said that uh, a vector in a given space if we rotate our coordinate system then the vector remains unaffected however its coordinate changes but the vector will remain the magnitude of it and the direction of it will remain the same now uh, with this the tensors come in action because in physics when we define certain physical quantities we want to define them without any frame of reference they are irrespective of they are not dependent on that and for this we use tensors tensors are mathematical objects that remain invariant under the change of coordinate system and the components of the tensor uh, change in a predictable ways we discuss the example of a rank of a tensor like we say that it's a tensor which is rank 0 rank 0 tensor rank 0 tensor is a scalar a scalar quantity a scalar physical quantity because when I say a scalar, then it is just a magnitude, it's just a number and its description is sufficient for it. And we like, for example, I say temperature and temperature, let's say 25 degrees centigrade. Then this temperature, it's a scalar quantity. It's a complete definition of it and it doesn't need other parameters to describe this one so such scalars we call is rank zero tensor it is to be noted however that not all scalars are rank zero tensors for example some scalars which are just numbers depends on their measurement like let's say the light frequency so it depends in which direction we are measuring it and due to that reason not all scalar um, are rank zero tensor but generally we can say that a scalar is a rank zero tensor then we discussed rank one tensor and it is actually a vector when we define a vector, then it is not only magnitude, but it is a direction. Uh, it has a direction as well. And this we call is rank one tensor. Why we call it rank one? Let me define this further. When I consider a vector, let's say a vector A, then this vector is a x and x unit vector plus a y component of it along y axis and a z component of it along z axis this i can write is a1 along a1 basis like this is the x component and similarly a2 and this is e2 and a3 and along e3 basis this i can write in a compact form is equal to summation on i which runs from 1 up to 3 in a i e i now we can we know about this summation that it is running from 1 to 3 so we can skip this one and can write this one is a i e i now is here when we were having the number of components of this thing when i consider ring zero then the number of components of it will be 3 to the power the number of indices and it is 0 so the number of components are 
1. When I consider a rank 1 tensor, then it will be 3 to the power 1 and it will be having 3 components. Here is 1 component, 2 component and 3 components. All vectors in 3 dimensional space, we know that they are having 3 components. Then we go to rank 2 tensor. The rank 2 tensor and that rank 2 tensor we call is a chronicler. Kronecker delta and this I represent the delta the Greek letter delta and it is with ij or sometime with mn different uh, representation of the indices are there but usually we write is delta ij now it is having two indices so that's why we call it a ring two tensor and is from our this rule it is evident that the number of components of this will be 3 to the power 2 in it will be having nine components we will discuss this thing in uh, more details like this is delta i j and this is equal to 0 f i is not equal j when the two indices are not the same and this is equal to 1 f i is equal to j when the two indices are the same then this will give 1 when the two indices will be different it will give 0 sometime we represent it with delta i only and then we write that this is equal to 0 f i is not equal to 0 and this is equal to 1 f i is equal to 0. So this is another representation of the chronicler delta. Now what does it mean? If we will be having this thing is like this, the delta i is 1 and j is 1. So we will have delta 1 1 and this will be equal to delta when 2 2 and delta 3 3 because we know that as from our previous i is running from 1 to 3 j is running from 1 to 3 so these three components it will give us 1 while the other components which are delta 1 2 delta 2 1 delta 1 3 delta 3 1 similarly delta 2 3 and delta 3 2 they will all give us 0 because they the indices are not the same so that's why this thing is equal to 0 we should uh, note another thing as well that the chronicler delta is symmetric like the chronicler delta is symmetric symmetric means if i exchange the indices like i and j so this is equal to delta j i it doesn't matter because i is running from 1 to 3 j is running from 1 to 3 so if i run this one from 1 to 3 and this 1 to 3 or this one 1 to 3 or this 1 to 3 so it will make no difference so that's why we say that chronicler delta is symmetric in nature another very really important property uh, of the chronicler delta is that we write that if we are having two chronicler delta such that this one is i j and this is j k then the j terms they are you can say merged with one another 
and this thing is the same if we write delta i k. So the j summation is kept here and this will be equal to delta i k. We can uh, prove this one. Let's say the summation on i and j such that i and j are running from 1 up to 3 and then there will be summation on k as well. So let me write here that k is here as well from 1 to 3. So i, j, k are running from 1 to 3 and then this is delta i, j, delta j, k. Let's say I write the very first terms and then it will be clear to us. You see we have delta 1 and then j and delta j so there will be j will be as usual so I am writing for this and let's say this is 1 as well. This will be the first term here like I am there are so many terms in it like this will be first we sum on i then we sum on j then we sum here this delta as well and we do sum on k as well so the so of the so many terms I am writing the very first term now when this will give us value when j will be equal to i means the first term then it will give me value and when this j here when j will be equal to i it will give me value and is i is equal to j means j is equal to i so it means here is i as well so i can uh, write this one means some other terms are here so when this j will be equal to this term then it will give us the value otherwise for 2 and 3 it will give 0 similarly here for 1 it will give value and rest of the term will be 0 it means the i value is important here so let's see this one some other terms will be here let's see this one i just see like the value of j here if j is equal to i then it will give me value otherwise not so it means here the term is i and j now this i j is equal to i in i otherwise it will not give us value when j is equal to i then it means here is i here is i and when k is here with it then it means it will give value for when i is 1 and k is 1 it will give value when i is 2 and k is 2 it will give value when i is 3 k is 3 it will give us value so it means the j can be skipped here and i can write in simple terms that this is delta i k and further if i do summation on all of them then i will be able to write the rest of the terms and then that will prove me as well this thing the delta i j and delta j k the j some it will be merged and we will have the first and the last one for example we are having delta i and let's say k here and then delta let's say we have j and k here now in this situation delta i k and delta j k so it means that this is delta i k and now is from here 
is we said that this is symmetric in nature if i exchange the indices it doesn't matter then i can write delta and this i can write is k j so this will be equal to delta i j the k will be merged here and its summation will not matter both will give us the same result and that's why we uh, use the Kronecker delta or any tensor that we use uh, it is due to the reason that with the help of tensor our calculations become easy we can verify things very quickly with the help of tensors is i will go on with the examples then you will come to know that how powerful the tensors are now for example if we are having aj aj and delta j k now summation will be made on j so j will only give value means this delta will only give value when j will be equal to k so for j equal to k we will get this value is a k and similarly it depends on the number uh, for which the j is running if j is running from 1 to 3 then summation on j will give us 3 like for example if i say that if j runs from 1 to n to n number then delta j j will be equal to n number and that is that delta j will be means a summation on j this means that summation on j such that j is running from 1 to n then this is delta 1 1 plus delta 1 2 will be there but we know that that will give us 0 so these term will survive delta 3 3 and this will go on until we reach delta n n and this will be equal to the first value it will give 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus and here it will give 1 and it will give us the n number so if we say that it is running from for vector spaces means three dimensions for vector spaces are rank one tensor then this will be delta j j such that j is running from one to three and this will be equal to three similarly delta i i is equal to three and so on so this is uh, to be kept in mind if we will be running it just for one dimension then delta j j will be equal here when i is equal to j this is equal to one it means it is for one dimension and when we will be running it for three dimensions then this will be equal to three now we can take the example of scalar product or dot product we call also is inner product now we know that let's say we are having vector a vector a is such that a x in x unit vector plus a y in y unit vector and a z and z unit vector which we can write in a compact form i am not writing the summation but a i and e i similarly i can write vector b equals to b x and x plus b y and y plus b z and z and this thing is equal I am writing it with another index j 
in E, J in order to differentiate it from A. Now what about the dot product? It will be A dot B. It means that it is A I E I dot B J and E J. Now we know that A I and B J are just numbers. So we write A I B J and then these are the bases. So A I dot means a dot product with E J. But I know one thing that the this will give me value only if we will have this thing equal to means when the indices will be the same then it will give us one because we know the x uh, from the dot product x these are the same basis x dot x equals y dot y equals z dot z and equals one and if the indices are not the same then it will give us then it will give us zero so it means this one is behaving like delta i j so i can write because when i will be equal to j it will give us one and it will be equal to a i b j so and if i will not be equal to j it will give us zero so it will the indices will vanish and i can write that a dot b is equal to a i b j delta i j and when i say that when i will be equal to j this will give us a value one and so a dot b is in short form can be written is a i and for j again we will write and this is the short form of the dot product so it can be then written is when under summation a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3 and this is the inner product or the dot product and this was all about the chronicle delta uh, which is a ring to tensors so we discussed some properties of it and now we will discuss the ring three tensor and ring three tensor is ring three tensor and this is the Levi-Civita tensor I J K. This is after uh, Tullio Levi-Civita. Uh, he was from uh, Padua city uh, in Italy and uh, we will now discuss it's a three-dimensional or uh, it's a ring three tensor the number of indices are now three it means the number of components will be three to the power three and it will be 27 so let's start with the ring three tensor